You know what I don't understand? Why? Why, if he's supposed to be this super advanced robot, does he transform back into this piece of crap Volvo? No. Oh, no. See? See? Oh, great. Fantastic. This car is sensitive. $100 to $500 just drove off. What? Hey! We're supposed to be doing a car review here. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And before we start, I just want to thank Megan Fox for taking time out of her busy day to come help us film. Can I just say, though, I've actually never seen you and Megan Fox in the same room together at the same time. Huh, weird. Anyway, this is the Volvo S60, and this is the Genesis G70. Let's do it. Hello to the new Volvo S60. Handsome, don't you think? More importantly, this is the S60 in its T6 form. So we get all wheel drive and a two litre four cylinder motor that is both supercharged and turbocharged. From that, we get 316 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Quite a jump from the base T5 motor. Couple that with the tech and comfort of a Volvo, and I'd be a little worried if I was that Genesis. Hmm. Nah. The G70 has nothing to worry about. BMW-inspired design means that this 365-horsepower twin-turbo instrument can slay a back road as well as it dispatches the commute. It has proper weight distribution, comfortable seats, a leather-wrapped interior, and a sing-song V6 engine note. It does, however, have a worthy adversary in the new S60. So let's take a closer look. All right, so the S60, this is where I'd normally tell you to go follow us on Instagram, except recently we did a poll and you all decided I deserve to be slapped. So no, you don't deserve it. Don't follow us on Instagram, go away. Okay, so the S60, this is the T6, and it's the R design, which I'm gonna to talk to Thomas about in a bit. However, the more important thing here is that the engine is both supercharged and turbocharged. And if this is the first car you get in that day, you'd probably say that this is quick. But then if you got in the Genesis G70 3.3 liter turbo, this suddenly seems not so quick. All right, the Genesis G70. I never pass up a chance to drive this car. We reviewed it a couple times on Throttle House, but when we realized that the 3.3 liter turbo is actually a better match for that S60 than the two liter, you can get a two liter version of this, but the 3.3 liter turbo, you can get this with all the kit and everything for $5,000 less than that S60 that James is in right now. So what does that supercharged, turbocharged motor feel like? I'm going to put it in dynamic mode by spinning this Scandinavian Gypsy's ring here. Dynamic. Okay. I just saw the revs jump up a little bit. I will say not much happens when you put it in dynamic, but I just saw the revs jump. And floor it. Okay. It is quick, but the Genesis is fast. And this doesn't sound that great. I guess a two litre four cylinder engine never can sound that great. Put it this way, if someone got in your car and you wanted to show your friend this car and they said to you, yo, I heard this thing was supercharged and turbocharged, you'd be like, aha, uh -huh, yeah, but let me show you the sound system. And why would you want a bigger engine? Because I put it in sport mode and you get a 365 horsepower twin turbo V6, which absolutely wails. The all-wheel drive system in this is rear biased and it genuinely puts the power down in a athletic and shocking way. This is genuinely a fast car. It's not a quick car, it's a fast car. It pulls relentlessly. It's a fantastic engine and I absolutely love it. Okay, so the eight-speed gearbox in this, is, is it reminds me of the XC40 in that it, it's geared in such a way that it makes it feel really peppy at low speeds. However, even in gear, there is some lag in the engine. So I'm in second gear now, and I'm gonna floor it, and you'll see there's a bit of a delay. So this, is my, this hand represents my foot. It's like, there's a good, yeah, it moves. There's a good second between me putting the foot down and it actually managing to spool up that turbo. 
Now, I have to be honest, initially when I got in this car, there are a few things that annoyed me. And in the week that I've been living with it, I've, I've started to understand what the car is about and I've started to enjoy it for different reasons. So no, it's not as sporty as that Genesis. It doesn't haul like the Genesis does. And one of the things that lets this car down really is the steering. All right. <laughs> this is such a fun car. There's a smoothness to the way that the power comes on that is absolutely fantastic. Obviously though, the downside is fuel economy. I average in this, it depends on you know how much highway I'm doing, but it seems like it does 11 liters per 100 kilometers. Right now it says 18.4 liters per 100 kilometers. Don't think that's quite right. But James's car is doing 9.7 liters per 100 kilometers. So that's like a, a significant difference. So if fuel economy is up there and priority for you, then the bigger engine in the Genesis is going to use a little bit more fuel. Can't get away from that. So let's see how this does in the corners. So the car actually handles it pretty well. It's all wheel drive and it feels reasonably planted. My issue with it is the steering. Yeah, it doesn't sound too good. Uh, the steering is not perfect. There's, and we complained about this in the XT40. There's a feeling of being over boosted and over assisted by this. And I'm not saying that because I want this to be the rawest car ever and it's not a sports car in that sense. I love some of the assists this car has. In fact, both of these cars have amazing lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control systems. I will say this does have the leg up on the Genesis. I think the pilot assist in the Volvo is fantastic. It's more confident and it means you can drive for ages and not get tired. And as far as I'm concerned, anything that can make me last longer, I'll take it. But from a confidence standpoint, honestly, the steering does let this car down. I've got used to it over the week, but the moment I get in another car like the Genesis, I, I realize how much of a negative it is. There's something, it's, it's to take Thomas's word, it's goopy. I don't know why he says that. He's a weird, he's a weird guy. All right, some corners. Now, this all-wheel drive system, rear biased. It's a longitudinally mounted engine, so it's properly balanced. There's a limited slip differential in the rear of this car, and you genuinely can feel the power going to the rear. It starts to push the rear around, and it feels fantastic. It feels rear-wheel drive. This is a playful vehicle. It's wonderfully balanced. In fact, the only bad thing about the driving experience of this car the only thing that separates this from the best that BMW can do, or definitely the best that Volvo can do, is the fact that over bumps in the middle of the corner, it took me a while to actually catch onto this or notice this, there's an instability to the rear. There's something about the suspension in the back that doesn't quite feel buttoned down the way that it should. And I don't know, that's just first generation probably, but there is a little bit more chassis tuning that needs to happen in this. But otherwise, it's a supremely balanced vehicle. The steering in the G70 is really, really good. Really quick ratio up front, and honestly, there's excellent front end feel. And that is the biggest thing that I like about this over that S60. The NVH in this car is so reduced. The noise on the highway is amazing, and with the sound system, there, there was one night I got in this car and I put the sound on and, it, and nothing else mattered. The moment James Taylor started singing, I, it didn't matter what the steering felt like. I didn't care about its ability to accelerate a bit less than the Genesis. It is so comfortable. These seats are amazing. The driving position is fantastic. This seat is one of the most adjustable seats I've ever been in. It has the lowest setting I've ever seen on any seat. It goes drug dealer low. And if you want, you get back to soccer mum high in no time. Okay, the, the ride in the Genesis is actually fantastic. So we put it in comfort mode. It's not, I can feel the bolsters loosen. It's not quite as quiet as that Volvo. The ride doesn't feel quite as refined in some ways, but they're really, really close. This is a very comfortable vehicle to be in, and for cruising long distances, the adaptive cruise control works fantastic. In fact, one thing I like about this over the Volvo is that when you put adaptive cruise on, you can go up by increments of one. So you can be at 99, 100, 101, 102. The Volvo goes up by fives. Even on the 18-inch wheels, the potholes are a bit of an impact on this, so one thing to keep in mind. But otherwise, there is a suppleness to the ride that is lovely and that honestly there's a trio of things if you can put them together there's the sound system plus the pilot assist plus the the lack of noise from the outside of the car that makes this an absolute dream cruiser there's a, it's almost there's like a lexus quality to it so as a driver comfort is bang on the seats are 
wide and comfortable. The bolsters are good. They're very adjustable. I can get nice and low. The steering wheel telescopes, I have a clear view ahead of me and my dials are easy to read. I also have a heads up display, which is really sharp and tells me everything I need to know. Everything is physically within reach for the driver as well. And I've got good spots for my elbows. This is a car that you can hoon on a back road, have a great time and then cruise for four hours on the highway and not worry at all. But now I'm gonna go remind myself why I like that Genesis so much. So I'm gonna go see Thomas. We're gonna talk about the exterior and the interior and then we're gonna switch. Ah, this continues to be a really fun car. Yeah, I love that car. This, this is a great car. It's it taken me a while to get used to it. It's different to that in a few ways. And I, and, and I went over that when inside the car. Yeah. But for what it is, it's great. And it looks fantastic. It I'll looks, tell you what, it looks better than this. It looks hands, well, it has, this has more of an identity. Volvo's established Genesis. It, as I said, when we, when we compared it to the Mustang, there's something generic yeah. about it. It's a bit try hard. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit like it tried too hard to look premium. Also, I don't like this. This like fake kind of sensor piece that's got a little bits of grill in it, but it's not, no, that's it's smooth. It's not this glass in front of the grill? No, it's actually like... Oh, it is, they're extra pieces, yeah. Yeah, it's, it just, it kind of breaks up that grill, which is otherwise very large, but overall, still a very good looking car. Well, this one has the R design package. Yeah, that's nice. It so also we, comes in red. Well, you can does. get that in red, but like this you get is... This comes in a nice blue as well. Yeah, it does actually. Yeah. But, I mean, like these are both very good looking cars. They're both similarly proportioned, but... Uh, all right, uh, Thomas, it's freezing. Let's do the interior. interior. Okay, that's enough exterior talk. Okay. <laughs> okay, first things first, yeah. you're in trouble. Why? Because this is a stunning interior mm -hmm. and matches is. the outside. Yes. My infotainment is inside the car. It's not some tablet splashed on top. Yeah. I have a 12.3 inch digital display. Yes. You haven't got one of those. Yes. Yeah. Does your infotainment go in a weird vertical tablet-like fashion so that when you put Apple CarPlay on, it weirdly splits it halfway on the screen. What are you talking about? Yes. I feel like most of the <laughs> should go this way. Yeah, it's no, like... I, I actually agree. So this is the same as the XC40 we're yes, in. Yes, yes. Um, these are annoying. I don't know, like, I have a compass here. It's not actually showing me anything. Right, well, I mean, if I you have... had navigation running, it might show you an next direction. Maybe, but, like, I don't want to have that taken up screen space. But as I you guess. said, as you said, CarPlay's proprietary, so it, like, it can only be that It can shape. only go that way. I mean, either way, this, I, I've had these infotainments before. It's not my favorite. It's a bit laggy, but, like, Everything is there once you realize yeah, it. Yeah, but, but. Wait. What are you trying to do? Hold on. I've been listening to things in the Gothenburg concert hall. Yeah, but you know what this does? This adds a fake reverb at the end of all audio on the radio. Yes, but I'm a lonely person, and this makes me feel like I'm in a hall full of people. It's actually an empty hall, so you're still really lonely. Look, that, that pew right there in that one pew. This is cool. Thank you. But if you put it in studio mode, you would get probably the best sound system I've ever heard. Because this is amazing. Bowers and Wilkins. But it's three and a half thousand dollars extra. It is worth three and a half thousand dollars extra. Honestly. Yeah. This agree. sound system is genuinely stunning. It's stunning. It's amazing. I had, it, I had it in the V90 and it blew me away. Yeah, it's amazing. And the steering wheel's really, really nice. Yes. Very, very premium. There is piano black all over it though, which is kind of like there's all fingerprints. Yeah, so I don't it's know if here it, too, right? Yeah, so here, I don't know why they have it on places. Here. I don't mind piano black, it looks good in the showroom, but when it's on places that you touch all the time, yeah. it starts to you know start to see it. Yeah. But I get the R Design steering wheel and this is the R Design shifter. Ooh. Weird quirk about this car though. Okay. The start engine stop. Yes. Is a turn. Right. So I, I've Sounds never like a key. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's a key, except when you turn it off, it's also clockwise. So it feels like you're turning it on again. Oh, so you and mean that like turns you want to off. turn it to the left as if like you, instinctively. Yeah, you instinctively you want to turn it anti-clockwise. Okay. That's the right. thing. The drive mode is also a wheel that spins, but you have to click it down in order to spin it. See if it accidentally hit it, maybe. And uh, Oh, this, the headrests. You can decapitate me with the... Oh, yeah, I've turned them down. I've turned them off. So what happens if I'm driving? Here, put the, put, push the thing now. Um, okay, hold on. I've got to kill... Uh, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Die! <laughs> yeah, that's weird. This is, this is okay. There's, like, enough knee room and enough headroom. It's good. I'm comfortable. You're comfortable? It's fine. It's not yeah. amazing, but it's good. I like you sitting further away from me. It's nice. Do I smell funny? You'd look funny. Okay, it's fair. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I mean, the interior of this is very nice. If you go, if you upgrade even more, you get like the really nice kind of Scandinavian wood yeah, the on the wood, dashboard. Yeah, the wood. That is that's, so That's the good. inscription model, right? Inscription, yeah. yeah. Okay. But like this is still, visually designed is fantastic. Nice big honestly. sunroof. Yeah, it's huge actually. Um, and honestly, the seats, I find them a little narrow, but they're really adjustable. And really I, think, I think these seats are superior to the Genesis. Uh, it's a really nice place I like to be. the Genesis seats better, but these are really... Also, 
Um, when I drove this before, the heated steering wheel and the heated seats come on so fast. They do. Instantaneously fast. I'm, oh, so nice right now. Yeah, it's cold outside. Aww. It's so uh, cold right now. That if you freezing. throw hot water into the air, it turns immediately into snow. That's true, actually. Um, okay, Why so. Why do we live here? I don't know. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're filming most of this from the inside of the car because it was just too cold to stand Stupid outside. Stupid country. <laughs> hey, hey, Canada's awesome. Can we look at the Genesis G70 now? But that means going out in the cold. Yeah, it fine. Does. Okay. Okay, let's do it. You're not moving, James. I don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. First off, cooled seats. Boom. And this is five grand cheaper? How, how much are you going to use those cooled seats today? Well, not today, but in the middle of the summer in Canada, it gets quite hot, despite what it foresight. looks like outside. It doesn't feel like there could ever be summer here. <laughs> Shut up, it's fine. Okay, this interior is still very premium. It's very nice, and I know I, I made fun of this a second ago. Yes. It does look more integrated, even though it is a pop-up kind of thing. Yeah. It looks more integrated than some things. It's better than what Toyota's doing right now. And the C-Class. Yeah. It's better than the C-Class. Yeah, yeah, actually. No, I, I like this. I think it's fine. Also, this infotainment is fantastic. It's the same as all Kia Hyundai stuff, and it's... That was pretty leggy, actually, yeah, I'll be that honest. Was pretty bad. I take back what I said just for that moment. But otherwise, the it's intuitive, and it's easy to use. Right? It's quite leggy. <laughs> pretty leggy. I, I, I'm not sure what's going on. Anyway, yeah. gloss over that. Uh, this is laid out, because I've got nice buttons here. Yeah. These feel good. Speaking of gloss, there's, there are less glossy surfaces in this. You've got just, the brushed aluminium, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, brushed aluminium, and also al 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 aluminum. That's how I say it. Okay. If you're uneducated. <sighs> you spell it. You literally spell the word differently. You do. We're going to put aluminum and aluminium here, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, this is my favorite part right here. They took the time to trim this in this leather, whether it's fake leather, real leather, it doesn't matter. This section is physically trimmed, and it's nice. All the way here, right? Ignore the side, just this section right here, right? This is good. I also have hilarious... This, this looks a little bit bedazzled, though. <laughs> <laughs> this interior does not quite live up to the, the Volvo in terms of like overall quality. It looks fine. There's just something a bit old manny about the, the, the cross hatching and the style here. I think I agree with there's you. A bit, there's a bit too much going on. But then the way this comes in and, and, and complements it is nice. Yeah, overall, this is a very, very, very nice car. Honestly, like for the fact that so many people in the comments always say, it's just a Kia. No, it's not. No. It's just not. Not that Kia's are bad right now, but this is no, just a weird insult. really, really good. Kia's, really Kia's are doing good, good stuff right now. Brush chrome. Brush yeah, I'm a, big fan, I'm a big fan of this car. I, I think the Volvo just has a leg up in, in terms of not trying too hard. Give it $5,000 more. Three and a half of that is the sound system, which you said is worth it. That's true. With the okay. pilot assist and those seats, I could live in that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very nice. Cruising. Like arguments with the girlfriend are no longer scary because yeah. I'll just go live in the car. <laughs> okay. You know? All right, can I drive it now? I'm driving it, bye. All right, the Volvo S60. Yeah, so it's obviously not as quick as a Genesis, but it feels pretty snappy off the line. I don't actually mind the power delivery in this. The only time you notice it being annoying is when you put it in manual mode and you put it in a gear, so in fourth gear, you put your foot down. There's like an obvious like foot down pause then power that you just the genesis just spools up i feel like it spools up a little bit quicker it feels more it feels like a smoother engine this doesn't feel as refined of an engine especially for a luxury car okay in the genesis g70 and i have power and bolsters i love reviewing this car and not just because it's a fun car to review i like reviewing it because i love reading a comment that goes i'm not gonna buy a kia so thank you for that but yes immediately I'm, I feel like I'm more in touch with the car. It's communicating to me better through the wheel, through the pedals. There's more power. But I miss my Bowers and Wilkins sound system. Well, I gotta listen to this garbage lexicon sound system. That is pretty good, <laughs> it's pretty good. All right, but for $5,000 more, or three, two and a half thousand if you don't get the sound system, you get you get less cylinders, less power, less athleticism, but perhaps more refinement in the ride and the chassis. So there literally are kind of two sides to this comparison. I mean, if you favor athleticism, then the Genesis is the one to do. And if you favor kind of luxury and comfort, then the Volvo might be it. However, even if you favor luxury and comfort, 
I cannot get over the steering in this car. I hate it. I don't say hate very often when I'm talking about some part of a car, but it is so goopy and so weird and sloppy. And even in the, the sportiest setting, I find that the front end is, is really soft. It, it doesn't feel like I'm confident pointing this. So I turn in, just catastrophic numbness in the front end. I'm guessing how much to turn the wheel. And I don't know what's happening in the front end. And I feel like it's kind of lopy and leaning like that. I don't like it. All right, steering into the corner. Oh, yeah, it's better. The weight in the steering is so much more linear. It's, there's no, the on center feels there. It's not like some, uh, I can't even, I don't want to even describe it. It's just fun to drive. So if you, if you can get over the steering, if you can get over certain aspects of how the engine isn't quite as powerful or sophisticated feeling, this is a more luxurious car overall. However, personally, my choice is the G70, without a question. For that money, you get that motor and you get that level of athleticism and it's, it's an engaging, fun car to drive and can still be luxurious. For me, the G70 wins, hands down. Okay, so to wrap it up, the Genesis is a better driver's car, but if I had to drive on the highway, if I was commuting, anything that involved no exciting roads, which by the way, if you've ever been to Toronto, defines Toronto, then the Volvo is the more comfortable luxury experience. And with the pilot assist, for, if I, again, if, if I'm heavily highway driving, the Volvo is my pick. And since Thomas kept making me drive out to his house this week for an hour and a half to peel his tangerines while he edited stuff, I was very glad to have the Volvo. But as someone that considers themselves a car enthusiast, it would have to be the Genesis and I would make sure to take it on fun roads to get the use out of my car. The reality is that both of these are very good sports sedans, and you wouldn't be making a wrong choice with either. Now, join Throttle House because we have a new video every week.